stressed and they're not getting things done and they don't have any control about stuff. I'm like, well, how do you, how's your business? And they'll be like, oh, it's locked in, it's dialed in. They're successful making money, but they can't feel, understand why they're feeling off, why they feel overwhelmed or, or scattered. And it's because half, 50% of your life is in a mess. It's a, a tornado. Well, because you, you will never f will feel fulfilled as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, I believe, if you have a family and you neglect this family. That there, What's the point of building an empire if you are so great in your business, but then your family is uh, lacking? A hundred songs, a hundred weeks didn't change it. Experiments, development, intelligence, and patience. I'll, don't give up on your future. We all start losers. We're all late bloomers. Gotta settle through the sewer. What would you say? What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Russian and the Freak podcast, episode number two, and we're going to have some fun with this conversation. As always, today we're going to be talking about treating your family like a business and treating your business like a family, and that's really what we do when we have struggles. Or why just give me this <laughs> creepy stare? What is up with that? I thought it was like a wax museum or some shit. What is going on over there? I won't be able to say a word. Because we're, we're, what we usually do when we have a, a problem in one area of life is we look at another area of life, say, what's working over there? How can we work it over here? How can the struggles in one area, we can come up with the solutions from another area. And the Russian and the Freak show is all about how to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and in life. So you can transform the chaotic complexity into your own personal normalcy. That's Listen, what before we even get into this topic, I mean, this is a very important topic. We're going to go a deep dive into this topic. But before we get into that, <laughs> I am just mesmerized <laughs> by those earrings. They are I, like... The, your ear is stretched out like a good two to three inches, at least. That doesn't hurt. That's got to fucking hurt. It does. That's why we need to hurry up and do this episode. It's like it pulled down so hard. Do it's like resting. Fashion? Do you know sometimes it's just pain and suffering? That That's sounds it like it's really worth it. That sounds like it's really worth it. <laughs> well, the girls will tell you about the wearing the high heels. So many times we struggle, especially when you get older. Your feet don't want to go on those high heels. Hold on, what the fuck? I thought we were just talking about anyway. like business and life, and we're going into a fashion show. But yes. those things have to... I didn't know ears are that has that much elasticity that they could stretch now out that far. Learn it's like resting on your thing. shoulder that weight. I could do fucking bicep curls. That that shit is heavy. That's like over a pound and a half. But, the, but what else did you see about that, these earrings? What else do you see different? That they're big as hell. No, guys, I have two different colors. Black and, and gold. And then the, uh, the other one is white and gold. And I have to actually two pairs of identical ones. I thought if we wear two different shoes, why don't I wear two different ear earrings? Deep. Deep. Deepness right there. All right, let's do Let's jump into the show. So, Again, treating the family like a business, you know, the business like a family. And think about it, you should be doing that way. You should, if your business is, is, is structured and whatever else, why would your family not be? And on the family, you're treating your family like family. Why wouldn't you treat your business, your team like family? And really, exactly that's what we're going to be discussing uh, today in our show. But who is this show really uh, for Steve, like because we need to address, I think people that are coming to this show and watching us and listening uh, on a podcast. This is important. Uh, who is this show really for? You don't know. You're asking me, or you just no, want me to tell? I want you, to you want tell. me to just tell people? So do you do you even know? So, well, this topic is perfect for people who are first married, run their own business, own their own business, work together have kids, work from home, office is at home, kids are at home because they're homeschooled, if that's even extra bonus. That's really what this is about. That's why it makes it so easy for us to take one area of life and transfer those skills, those lessons, those wins, the shit that's working and deal with different struggles in other area of life. But I think we need to edit the transition. So some of you m might be in transition, maybe going from 
uh, working for someone else and going into entrepreneurial life or maybe your kids are still at school and you didn't take them out of school and it's okay. So for those of you who are listening and watching us, know that you're going to take something out of this group and relate to one subject on another and also you will learn that there are ways to really uh, uh, have that me. have me. that freedom Where are we going? in life. No, I just want to... You said you had some question for me. Put me on the, the hot seat. What was the question you said you had? The question was, where do we begin about our struggles, really? That's that's because, you know, when we... So is this your way of not being prepared for the show that you said, no. all right, you're just going to ask me what, where we begin no, with I our struggles? No, I have all kinds of notes here. And because when I... When Wait, we what's, were the question? what's the question? No, when we were preparing the, the show, I was thinking, okay, should we begin like way back when we had our first location of No, but what was your question? Boxing? You just had a question. What was the question? Can you repeat, repeat the question? Yeah, what 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 were our struggles? Like that why we really come up with that? Throw me under the bus. Let's see. All right. I have a good one. A good oh. I am so glad you asked this freaking question. This is good. This is gonna be good. This is gonna be some good stuff right here. Budgeting. In your business, you have to have a budget. You can't put do wasteful spending. You can't join the Indiana Jones <laughs> fan club <laughs> and pay how much ever for a year. You can't buy, well, I guess it's a good use of like funds when, cause if they're multi-purpose, you could wear them for earrings and use them for weightlifting. So that's actually a pretty good investment right there, I'd say, but not wasting money, knowing where your money's going in, how much money's coming in, how much money's going out, where's your money going out to. But then the biggest problem, you know, who's more broke in business? People who make a lot more money are a lot more broke because they're less, they don't, they don't, Take care of their money as well. That's why people, when they people win the lottery, you know when people win the lottery, why they go bankrupt? Why they go bankrupt? Hmm. Because I, if, I know, I've heard they weren't, story no, they weren't saying. successful. They just got immediate riches that they didn't have any discipline or any structure mm -hmm. to build. So now they just have a bunch of money built on their bad habits, habits and they just have the same bad habits and now it's just times a thousand and if they just go to shit. So, so it goes down to habits, really, that the habits are everything, that we need to have habits in place uh, first in in life and in business. And That's you have, the good habits. You need so, to, and, and especially with the money, know where the money's going, know where it, not wasting money, not buying a new, like in business, you, you don't need to just blow money because you're making money, then you want to just go and, yeah, you want to put money back into the business, but not just wasteful spending. And then you take, all right, that's working in business. We're becoming profitable in business. So how can we transfer that into the personal life, from professional to personal? How do you think we could do that? Oh, wait, I have an budget. idea. Oh, wait, I have an We're idea. We're going to budget the personal life. We could not buy a new couch every other week and buy some new shoes every now other day. the listeners and people will think that we buy couch every single week. No one can hear what you're, when you're whispering like that. Well, maybe I don't want the world to know. No, guys, this is serious. Um, yeah, I know what you where are you going with this. So really budgeting. So don't no excess spending in business and in life. The rule number one. So what's another place where it can transfer over that we use it 100% every day? I'm thinking of a, a one on the top of my head. What's another place that we trans that we transfer over from business? Really from and it's fucked up. What the fucked up part is usually you take the business stuff and transfer into personal because you put all your time and energy and effort and money into business and then we don't do it personally. So what's another one, an area that comes to mind? Scheduling. That's exactly the one I was thinking of. Look at that. Scheduling. That's what, but, but we worked hard on it because when I go back to our early early years when we had bootcamp and boxing location, the first bootcamp and boxing, we never done such a scheduling. We never have, we always been disciplined, but we've never done what we're doing right now. And you know what guys, it's cool to see that you see that transformation over so many years, how you improve in one area of your life. And then the next, the other area of your life improves. So the scheduling that we've used to never done, but today what do we do? We we we, we meet every single We're Sunday. On schedule. We're on okay. schedule. Okay. We're not, uh, you did, did, did one thing at a time. Okay. Yes, you're right. Your back is now to the camera. There's a difference between having a conversation <laughs> and turning your Guys, back I can't on get the camera. This. This Are you is trying to do the booty shots or something? This is our second to show the booty episode. Shots on the, Hold on, on the let me explain. This is our second episode. We used to do just the live, so I would face the. The camera and here and there I would look at you 
But now... No, 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 no. Here's how it normally would go. There'd be two chairs here, 45 degrees, equally centered to the mic and to the camera. That would be the start of the show. By the end of the show, my chair would be like out the door. <laughs> this chair would be centered and straightforward, just staring into the camera for all the glamour shots. That's what would be going on. That was weird. <laughs> but we're changing things up for the podcast. We're changing up the, the strategy and the tactics. And we could probably find ways that we could transfer that into the business and prefer personal, professional, all other good shit too. But scheduling. So do you remember what, when we were in Texas and I was speaking to the group and I was asking them about their calendar. You remember what I was asking them about the calendar, about the percentage yes, of the calendar? Yes, you, you asked the group um, how much time they spent with their family, with their kids. Do they have actually a family no, I said, time? What percentage, and, what, what percentage of the, your calendar? If I opened up your okay. calendar right now and then you could do this yourself while you're listening to this, what percentage of your calendar would be business professional compared to personal? Or business compared to stuff just for yourself Stuff on your calendar for your family, for your kids, like what percent? And do you remember that what, what the numbers were? No. 95%. Almost a, nine, the average is always 95%. Some people say 80% was business. Some people, once in a while, you'll hear a 60 and it's usually bullshit. And I say, oh yeah, 60? Pop open your calendar. And like, well, no, it's not my calendar, but that's what I do. It's just not my calendar. I said, okay, so on your calendar. So the family's not, you don't need to put it on your calendar. Check, got it. But you need to put this other stuff. So it was, it's always, you a lot of people yell 100% and then 95%, 90% of business, of professional on their calendar. So you're telling ask, me that they're scheduling the, the time with the employees. They schedule the time to do business meetings, me, meeting all the CEOs for dinners and all this stuff. And they don't everything, spend time sales, with their, everything. Even the lowest employee on the, that, that is not even performing, they'll meet that person. That person will be on their calendar and schedule. Think of how fucked up that is. And then themselves won't be on the calendar on the schedule. Their family won't be on it. Their kids won't be on it. They don't have a, a date night on there. And, oh shit, we have to do a, we have to, a, a date night? Yeah, I'm ready. Apparently. If I would have known there was a dress code, I didn't know we were going to the, the prom in like Zimbabwe or something. You know that I love dressing up. You know that. So from now on... that For the I, first time in a long time, this morning... I decided I wanted some extra recovery because I've been lifting hard and training hard. So I woke up at 5.30 today intentionally instead of 5 a.m. You woke up at 5 a.m. Yes. I was downstairs before you. I can't, I couldn't, I've been thinking about it all day. It really is making <laughs> me lost focus today working. So since we're on scheduling and taking things that work in one area of life and the other, what the fuck goes on in all that time? And you know what? It's so good that you're actually telling me. No, this. I've been mind-boggling. I've been able to focus I today I love this, of this that you're saying because so many times I realized like <clears throat> how men have awesome because you guys get up and five minutes takes you to get ready and you you are already downstairs doing your meditation, doing your uh, AM routine and I'm kind of behind you. But I chose to do that. I chose to put my creams on. I chose to put a little bit of makeup on. And does it take 20 minutes? Yes, it does. But then what makes me good and makes me happy? I do all these videos. So I wanted to look good. And I know that it's required You should just go and just time. do it raw. Just go and show them the real thing. The real the But real I've shown thing. my real thing. People know it. But sometimes I will not I do that. I just know. Let's talk about efficiency and getting things done and productivity. I was up a half hour after you and downstairs probably a half hour before you. I could, I've, been, I've been struggling with this issue all day. I couldn't, re, I couldn't wrap my head around it. It's the makeup and the goop and all that. Well, not that much, but just a little bit. And it takes a time and this is my choice. But there are days that I don't do that and it takes me 10 minutes, right? So it, I can also move this to another time, of course, as well. But we need to also realize from this scheduling, realizing... What really wastes our time? It is. Like, what is really on and your where schedule? where are you wasting time? So now you have to think, all right, if... Same thing. Let's look at business. Would, you wouldn't waste all that time. Yeah, you want to get ready. You want to feel good. All that stuff, sure. But does it really take... Like, do you need to take that much time? So you probably are losing time there. And it, you're probably so many different areas of the life. Like, this is where you can find so many... And this wasn't even a planned part of it. I've really just thought of it just, just now as we we're talking about this morning thing. I didn't even think of that until just now how that transfers the same way. Like how, there's so many areas of life you could find that in business that work. Were you glaring at me under that Indiana Jones hat? Holy no, crap. I'm just thinking I'm, because like absolutely I will find, I'm sure I'm going to find areas in my life 
that I'm wasting time. Of course, we all do. I'm just saying in and general, we could do that with business. The, the whole purpose of this show, which, like finding different areas where you could take it what's working in one area and, and make other areas life even better. So you're more productive, more efficient. And the, the scheduling, look, people don't schedule their personal life. If you pulled over my calendar right now, you'd see my workouts are in there. My morning routines are in there. My nighttime routines are in there. Even when we're going to go watch some, some stupid episodes on Netflix later is going to be on there. The downtime, the stupid time, the free time, the recovery time, all is on there. Time that we're going to go, when, if we're, we had to go to jujitsu, the time to drive to jujitsu, the jujitsu class itself, the driving back, everything is in there because it keeps structure. It's discipline. It gives you freaking freedom knowing what's going on. People won't do that in their personal life. And then they wonder why they're like overwhelmed and they're stressed and they're not getting things done and they don't have any control about stuff. I'm like, well, how do you, how's your business? And it, they'll be like, oh, it's locked in. It's dialed in. They're successful making money, but they can't feel, understand why they're feeling off, why they're feel overwhelmed or, or scattered. And it's because half, 50% of your life is in a fucking mess. It's a, a tornado. Well, because you, you will never f will feel fulfilled as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, I believe, if you have a family and you neglect this family. That, that What's the point of building an empire if you are so great in your business, but then your family is uh, lacking? Now, my... What I've seen with coaching clients as well, what I've realized is that so many times they're so good with organizing personal life. Some of them. Some of them are excellent with organizing personal life, but then they like, they like organization in their business. So we've been recently, I've been teaching my clients, it take what you do. You are so diligent about meeting your friends, going out for dinners, doing all these things on on that personal level and uh, having hobbies, going dancing, you know, doing all these things, but yet you are disorganized in your uh, business life. So why don't we do that? And we were actually going from personal to business. And it's really cool because then they create that Amazing picture because look at this. They already are so good with organi organizational time for their personal life. And then all these ideas and the creative stuff comes into place for their team members. And I, I love that. Total, I, I see the total opposite. I rarely see someone who's more organized in their personal life than their professional life. They're, it's 95% is on their calendar. No, I and know, but the, I'm the just saying that. The one thing that's on there is like Little Billy's soccer game. And they're just going to be sitting at the fucking soccer game in their phone anyway, bullshitting. And they miss Little Billy, shoot a score, and he kicks the score. And he looks over at at dad and dad is sitting there buried with his face in his phone doing a tweeter or something and then little billy's all fucking slumped over looking down at the the ground usually i see it the exact opposite of that they're more organized on the business people don't no i see this with moms a lot of times moms will be the first one especially the ones that maybe don't have businesses they they uh, either stay at home mom they will have calendars full for kids but that they will don't have the calendar for their discipline, their non-negotiable, their workouts, uh, uh, just doing stuff so for, for themselves. Business, for themselves, they yeah. need to put it on for themselves, not for like they don't even have a business to put it on for. Yeah, if they if they stay at home, but the ones, yeah, that's what it is. So it's not just the business; you have to put it for yourself too, your own personal time on the calendar. And do you put your own personal stuff on the calendar, or is it just business and professional? Well, I do because. What when I go, for instance, my time will be uh, in my. In oh, my no, you definitely time. do. Hold on. One time you left your, ca your no, calendar no, no. open one time. I do remember. It was nails. It was like or... nails and hair and toes and my earlobes and wax and eyebrows. A facials. And this. You're busy, busy, busy. You have, like, how you couldn't possibly keep track of that shit without putting that shit on the calendar. But I always you need don't... to ask yours, like, what percentage is, is freaking personal? You do like the other, you're the <laughs> flip chart of that. You're like the outlier, the opposite. It's like 95% is going to get, today I'm going to get the right eyebrow freaking mm -hmm. penciled in. And the next day, this earlobe is going to get cleaned. And then my pinky toe, they're going to fucking straighten it out because it's all weird and crooked with some but weird But I toenail. always, but look, I always tell women, like, you, you, you really need to put that time on your calendar. Like, if you designate your life to others and you're always the caretaker, you need to have the time for yourself. And you, you don't need to overwhelm yourself with this. Just add a little bit. Because recently, for months right now, I have not been going to get my hair done. I've been doing them myself. And I like it because I actually found the color. So this actually, that three hour of chunk has been taken three off my calendar. Three hour of chunk. Chunk three of hour time. Of chunk. Because that's three hours of my time every month. 
That's a lot. Even though I would bring book with me and read and do the work, it's just a little bit different setup. So but what's an area that we have or most people might have personally that works that could help them in business? Because it's usually the other way around. Almost every example we're giving is this works in business, now go try that personal. What's something that's working personally that people could transfer into their business? Mm, workout time. They're gonna work out in their business? Oh no. Well, some people do at, at their business, but uh, I can't. Even, I'm, I'm asking because I can't. I couldn't even come up with any when I was thinking about it for the show. None. There's. It's it always the be, other way around. It's always the business helps out the the personal. Well, what about events like you hosting an event or meeting couples for dinner? Um, hosting events for your team, but that's not every day. That would be like once in a while. But that's still something you could do. So, uh, so no, events, people don't. I think, so that people don't do enough social stuff. No, with first, their that's teams. A good one. No, this is like yes, because so people don't do social stuff for their teams, and they don't get they their don't. team get to get to know each other well. They get. You might get to know your family, assuming you do. So you have say family dinner, and at family dinner you have like deep conversations. But then at work, it's like just passing by. Hey, how you doing? Did you see the game? Yeah, yeah. Great. So I and think events, and also not like, like why Peak Physique was so successful. Like think about it. All these parties, these weight loss challenges that have done for these people, we were like the 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 the, the what is it? The club of uh, the club. Uh, the, the, yeah, the nightclub. When we would organize so you, these so parties, people would know example. each other. Taking the social way of getting to know each other, becoming a family, and taking that into the business. That's actually a good one. That's an amazing one because you need all to right, not right. only... Hold on, hold on. We don't need to go... Oh, no, no. that's amazing. I'm one. talking about to, pe to people that listening to us that... Like, think about it. Not only you need to know your employees, you should know... Em employees like your employees kids you should know their spouses like in like this is an extended family that's how you build trust that's how you build uh, connections that's how you build an amazing team so people uh, love the environment that they work and people always say oh they're our employees we they're like family but then you'll ask them oh yeah what's that person's how long has that person been married i don't know how many kids do they have i don't know what are the kids names i don't know What's the biggest struggle they're dealing with right now? I don't know, but you treat them like family. So that's how you treat your family, like shit, like you don't know anything about them. You, I would assume you know that stuff about your family. And if you don't, you should. So take those strategies personally. And, and probably we sat here and we're brainstorming. We could probably come up with a ton more if we really thought about it, about the personal to professional. But that's All probably the main one. All kinds of events. I think, I think the main it's one. Better. You're back on these parties. Now mm -hmm. you're, you're just looking for no. an excuse to have another motherfucking party. You know what? Yeah, well... Yeah, we're gonna have a party you just coming. Flash up. me! What did you just do with your what? skirt? This is a long skirt. What are you what talking about? What did you just do with me? your skirt? <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? It's a family well, show. Twenty-four we're on hour challenges. On camera. But that's a part of, of event. That's is, an event. You gonna do a twenty-four hour challenge at work? Yeah, why not? Work out. <laughs> no, let's just like. Take the win and move on with the win. Now you try to force it. Now you just made the win. Like, you just, we, okay, forgot, so we forgot all that. about the great one that you came up with and you just ruined it by trying to like, oh, 24 hour event. Oh, the events. All right. We already did all that. All right. Well, we did that at the gym. It started with, what? do you remember? Hold on. Do you remember the first event that we did at Peak Physique in Nanuet, the 24 hour charity? Yes, it was for autism. Yes. 24 that hour was book, the 24 hour boot first class. 24 hour boot and class. some and people were drinking and got drunk and were doing exercise we were training while they were drunk because it was a party <laughs> at the same time and we were going through a ladder and some kid had we, was supposed to be holding a medicine ball but he grabbed a weight plate and was doing like a jack press overhead and he dropped the plate or was it a girl a girl a girl she dropped the plate on her own head <laughs> and she had blonde hair and that blood came gushing out of her I should, head. I should not be laughing right now. It came gushing out of her head for like an hour. We're like, That's this horrible. bitch is going to fucking die right here on the floor. Like, <laughs> holy Dyson shit. Is laughing her hair me. turned purple. She looked like the fucking Joker. <laughs> it was nuts. Steve, stop. You're making... No, and it was not even that big of a fucking cut. But that bitch could bleed. <laughs> oh my God. I forgot all about that. You just made me think of that now. We were talking about that. We did the drunk episode the other day for the Steve Eckert show. It was, it would not stop bleeding. We didn't know what to do. I, I, I started pouring, you know I started I pouring crazy glue in this bitch's head. <laughs> do 
you know that I forgot about this. You are so awful. <laughs> we apologize. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit. But this is truth. But I forgot about this. Uh, this. It was gushing people. blood. Her hair turned purple. <laughs> like, I thought blood was supposed to be red. This shit was like pumping. It was like a murder scene. It was like this, like squirting out like a faucet. Like, bzz, 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 bzz. I like, just wonder, hold on. I just wonder what is happening. In and this head. is what you want to do in business. You're telling, this is your great <laughs> advice to people <laughs> to have these parties and these 24 hours. So you couldn't just leave it as socializing and get to know your team like family. You had to go there. Now some motherfuckers out there is going to have this 24 hour workout with their team at work Please. and get everyone wasted. No, no, no. And next thing you know, they got some bitch looks like Joker on the floor <laughs> spitting out blood like a fucking fountains of fucking youth. Guys, no. There is no alcohol involved in your parties. Let's, let's be honest. No alcohol. That's the best way to get to know people, be real, and... Yes, let's finish this on social events, I think. <laughs> you just fucked that all <laughs> I don't even want to say it on camera. How, what's the statute of limitations on that? I'm not even sure. I don't even remember her age. She might have not even been, she might have been young. Er, I don't even remember. But let's okay, not go let's, with that. Let, yeah. Let's not give any evidence on, on camera. But I think that it's been over five years ago, so I think that's past past limits it was like someone's sister or something i don't know i don't know okay let's remember, move on. if you're out there and you're listening to this and you were the one that split your fucking head open like the joker please reach out to me i want to send you on a gift or something <laughs> yes anyway all right so now let's tie it all together let's put this all together i think the main these are all huge things scheduling social getting to know the team like a family like finances. that's awesome finances paying attention to your spending and tracking it like people track it in one area and not in the other or sometimes they'll be great that's probably one some one that some people do, I think, per personally. And then in their business, they just like spend and don't pay attention to the fucking numbers. Steve, but I have another. A huge one. one that it all ties together. Which one? Meetings. All right. You tell me you have another one. You looked down at my notebook where no. I literally, on my own notes, just circled meetings. I, I and can't you look see. down and say meetings. I can't see from your mumble jumbo over there. You can't see. I literally just think right now meetings. meetings because we meet. Don't be stealing my shit. Oh, no, we meet. I'm thinking for what we're doing in our business and profession and personal life. We meet. We meet with each other for business every Tuesday. And then we meet. Personally, personally, as a family, every but Sunday. Right, but where is the, how did the, let's how start where it started? You know, we we didn't start doing that. We had no. we had business meetings and team meetings and and with employees for decades before we ever had it in the family. Yes. So to say, where is the struggle? There it is. Like, all right, we you're how you're don't you feel unorganized and unstructured in the family, and no one knows what they're doing. Okay, why is that? Well, let's see. I don't know what you're doing each week. I don't know who's taking who to this to, to practice. I don't know what we're working on here and there. Well, how did we deal with that in business? We would have meetings. We'd have monthly all hands staff meetings where the whole entire team was together. We'd have social meetings with the team, but then we'd have also then one-on-ones every month or quarter with the team. Then we'd have department meetings. Like there'd be a sales meeting. There'd be a trainer meeting. There'd be uh, an admin meeting. The admin would have a meeting every morning, actually. Admin yeah, would meet every, every morning. morning. Yeah. Sales, we do a sales meeting every week, I think. Yes, every week. Uh, we would team have. leader meeting, we do every morning, mm -hmm. I think. Yes. It used to be every only on Mondays. And we said, you know what? Let's do it every morning to keep when we were getting very busy and lots was going on. So, all right. So, how do you transfer that over into personal? Fucking easy. Have family meetings. Who? And, and no one, people say they do, but no one has structured family meetings like that is a, a fucking game changer there is a in, yes in for every week like i am standing always by this like it gives me such a preparation i love our meetings uh, uh, uh kids I, I don't even know if they like it i think they like it and maybe they wouldn't they don't want to really spend the time but i think it gives them a sense of like uh, uh understanding what's coming up they feel more organized i love it because because every Sunday I get prepared for my own thing for the week. And then when we actually meet in the afternoon, I see where I maybe made a mistake or when I need to improve certain things or I need to move things around. It's like a double checkup. And also because we have four people at the table, it's like four heads giving different ideas. I love it. Mind blowing. It should my, be like a four people is four heads. Got it. 
It should be like right now the team has to make All right, like but the there's different the point is the going. point is the different types of meetings that we had in business, we have similar different types of meetings with the family. We have an all hands meeting, we do that weekly, all, all family members. Then you and I have a meeting mm -hmm. each week, just us. Then I have a meeting with just both kids. Then I have a meeting with just the boy. Then I have a meeting with just the girl. Then you have a meeting with both. Then you have a meeting with just the girl and with just the boy. So just every the girl, just every the variation of meetings the same way where- His name is Tyson. Same way that we would meet with a sales team or this team or one-on-ones or different departments and then sometimes all hands. And it works out perfect. It keeps everything in line. It gives different, those are all different dynamics. Every one of those different types of meetings is a different dynamic in the business. So why would you not want to have all those? It works. It works in building the culture and the company and becoming profitable and working together as a team. Why would you not want that same type of different, all those different variables and dynamics with the family? Like when we all four have a meeting, it's one type of energy. But then when I have a meeting with both kids, that's a certain type of energy. But then when I have a meeting with just the girl, that's a different type of energy when I'm with both of them. Mm -hmm. Then when I have a meeting with just the boy, that's different than with both of them and different than with us. Then when it's all of us, and I'm sure it's the same with you. And I actually, yes. yo, you have a real different dynamic. I've heard what goes on in those meetings. And that is know, a shit show in there. That is like a circus. You know what? I hear like chairs flying, people screaming, crying. <laughs> I heard a fucking goat the other day in there. Like what the fuck is going on in those meetings of yours? Just having I, fun. I want to know. Uh, but yes, different different energy, and we get to know each other so much more on a different level. Like really, like I think that we I used to didn't know much ki my kids as much as I know them right now. I mean, first of all, since they've been since they've been uh, at home with us, and second of all you know, we, we pulled them out of school. It's just like such an amazing dynamic of having them at home right now. So there is so much to think, I think for those of you guys that are entrepreneurs, start moving what works in business to your life, especially with the scheduling as Steve said, and think, really think if you have kids at school that maybe it's time to pull them out of school and teach them what you know about business and teach them uh, the organization and, and, and l l all these tools that you've been teaching your employees, it's time to teach your kids because that's, that's been a big thing. Like I've been since, uh, you know, we've, we always wanted to have that, that freedom because that's the, that was the missing part for our freedom was the kids going to school. And we, it never hit us until like one day, just like out of nowhere, we like, we're making this decision and this was exactly in Daff Valley. I will never forget. We love that place. We're going to be going there every November. Our kids were never the same after that trip to Death Valley. Their lives were forever changed. It was the most game-changing, different thing that happened in their life. The whole entire trajectory of their life changed. Because think about it. We, in business, we would coach, you'd coach up your team. You'd have the people who you're coaching. And that was a huge one, a huge shift. Like you're coaching your team, you're coaching your staff. Why would you not coach your family, your kids? You're teaching your team, you're mentoring them, you're leading them, but then people don't lead their, their kids. When we first started homeschooling, we were at my mother's in New York. We flew out the last time before the funeral. We flew out for my mother's surprise birthday party, her like 115th birthday party. And one of my aunts says, we said we were just starting homeschooling or we just started, or we were about to start it. I think we were still on vacation. I don't remember. We were just about to start it or like, oh, well, how would you do that? How will you be they're like, do you have tutors coming in or teachers or does the government give you the curriculum? I said, no, we're doing it all ourselves. Like, well, how are you going to have the time to teach them when you have all these coaching clients and all these programs you do? I'm like, I said to her, let's re re ask that question again and ask it slower and listen to your own words. And she says it again and she couldn't click in her head mm -hmm. that how could I have time for my clients and for programs and for all this other stuff and for team and staff, but not have time for my own kids? How could I not have time? And hold on. I'm willing to on. sacrifice, like literally this year, we'll make, since we've homeschooled, we'll make a couple hundred thousand dollars less in a year for, after we start homeschooling. And I'm fine with that trade off. I would take that trade off any fucking day of the year. And it's worth it because. Why would I, you spend all your time? I'm, so I'm gonna use all this coaching strategies and tactics on clients, 
on people who were originally were strangers and on team members and on staff and on followers on the motherfucking internet, but not pour into my own kids that same way. Why? How? That's an ass backwards twisted way. Yeah, and guys, it stings a little bit, okay? Because I know that it will sting for those of you who are listening and who are entrepreneurs and your kids are still at school. So just take that in for a second and start open up your calendar and and really review reflect on how much do you spend time with your kids because i know that some of these people and even they post it on social media how much time they spend with their kids but it's bullshit because they don't because then you hear the stories that they really don't and it's it's your and we have lessons obligation. Planned. There's lessons yes. planned. We know what we're going. Same way you would plan, like what are you going to? Work, what's your agenda going to be for a meeting? What are you going to teach these people? What are you going to train your team or your coaching clients? You go into a coaching session with a plan. You know what the agenda is. You know what you're working on. You know what their struggles are. You know them deep inside and out. But you don't even know your own motherfucking kids. Exactly. Like, go so, in there but, with a plan, but, with a lesson. Like teach them. Fucking coach them the same way you coach and teach your clients and your team. Yeah, and how do we know the struggles of our clients? We know exactly because we have a certain system in place that they do and the, these and then debriefs. The kids, we have debriefs, a daily debrief, and a, a daily AR after action review of the day. And one-on-one clients, they fill this out every day and email to us and we are literally have the, a pulse on their life and their business and personally, professionally, their health and fitness every single day because they do a debrief. They actually pay us a lot of money to send us this every day and then meet with us once a week. You know, when we were, when we had gyms, we used to, we used to make our staff do that because we said, all right, we did it with clients. So was this, we used the same idea. We said, all right, if this is working with clients, like, look, we should work exactly. it with the team. So think about it. Now there's actually another web to this. We didn't even bring up yeah. that. I'm just thinking of now. If things work with your business on just the client side, maybe it's going to also work with your team side, which maybe it's going to work with your family. Or maybe if something's working with your family, it's going to work with your team. It's a work with your clients. It's really a web We kind of just said ideas. professional, but professional is like two-sided. Clients and, and yes. teams. So we always had this daily debrief for now decades with, with high end, like personal training clients or coaching clients when we even when we had the gyms open. And then we said, you know what, this is working so well getting to know the clients. Why would we not want to do it with our team? And we did it with the team. And the clients are paying for this service. The team was getting paid for this service. And we would have team members, dumb motherfuckers, that would complain about getting coached and mentored and having to do reflections and set goals and why do we have to do it and resist it when motherfuckers now are paying $5,000 a month to get that done. And these people were getting paid a paycheck and a salary to do that, which is for them to, to benefit them and to just thought came to mind. But, you know, it comes down to really the mindset. Like um, you need to, I think, grow to have that type of mindset. Like I, I hear this and I meet people every single day that they are so it's so hard for them to understand the concept of of learning uh, taking the time to do something and 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 having mentors some people just don't understand the concept they they really don't and then if you have, again back now have those mentors and that's why we do the AR with the kids when we first started down there in Death Valley we were in the RV we had our first family meeting there and there was shitty internet. We had the hour of power by the fire pits where there was good Wi-Fi. We had our meetings inside the RV and then we went down there to get to work on the Wi-Fi. But we started the a- we started the AAR as a daily debriefs that day. Like right then we mm-hmm. said, this worked for years with clients. It worked for the team members that wanted to level up. And I would guarantee that the only team members that back then that took that shit serious are the ones now that are really progressing and leveling up and doing their own thing and making money. I bet it's that way 100%. So do actually you think, embraced it. So do you think that th- these people that are listening and they're like CEOs, entrepreneurs, uh, they have teams that they should be doing in their team, for their team's daily debrief? That in a way, I, th- I think small. we're a small business, it's possible. Like, what about a company that has 200 people? Maybe you within know. their teams, maybe the manager within their teams. Because yeah, you, get, you know what I like? You get to Sorry. HR, you get to know, where they allowed to yes, ask them, yes, what are they allowed exactly. to talk about. Exactly, that's a little bit know. different. Not really but sure. Exactly, but what I like about the debriefs is like, because there is so much of a component of personal and professional life, your thoughts, your ideas, you get to know a person on a deep level. But you know what? There's no reason you can't do that. You can't, maybe they would have to reword some of the way that the questions are worded, but you can have an end of, the, it's an end of day report. Someone works for you. You could have them, all right, this is when you work here, this is the the... We're setting the standard. 
living the standard and enforcing the standard. Here's the standard we have. At the end of each day, you have an EOD, an end of day report. Same thing as a daily debrief. You're gonna show me what you did that day. You're gonna review your goals. You're gonna set your goals. Like, yeah, they should do it. Even on a even on a larger scale, they should do it. Like, why would you not wanna know what your team, now the CEO of 200 employees is not gonna get 200 people sending to them, but maybe a department head that has 15, 20 people or 10 people or eight people, they should, fuck yeah, they should be getting a, a report. And and people that don't wanna be on board with that probably aren't gonna be a good fit. For because, this company, yeah. Oh, we're family. All right, then why you don't you wanna share your goals with me? Why aren't you sharing your struggles or your wins or your gratitude? There's no reason you can't have those those discussions. Mm -hmm. It's just probably if people bring up certain things, it's like it becomes an HR issue and then that have to get reported to HR and then people start so, worrying about what they're putting in there. So there's probably some shit about there that, that you'd have to know about for your company yeah, in general. But yeah, you should have a, why would you not want to get to know your people? And we have the kids do it and some days there's, there's is, is really good and some days it's not that great, but then some days are so funny because you, you, they but then you see when stuff. they put the time into it and they put some like clever answers and some yeah. funny shit, mm -hmm. you get to know them even more just through a, a debrief, through an email that your kids are sending you. It's working with the team. It's working with the clients. It works with the family. Make it a fucking circle. Like everything is feeding each other. It's like a force multiplier working in one area. Let it help you in other areas. Let it help you dominate in all areas in business and in life. So let me tell you today. Uh, I, I just recently purchased this cool book. Uh, it's called B Badass Affirmations. And it's all about opening a random page and reading it. And Ivanka sees this book and she reads it and she starts reading and she goes through these affirmations. She's like, I like that. Can you, mommy, can you please take a screenshot every single day and send it to my personal chat? Because I guess the, the guys wouldn't really like that because it's all about like women. And listen to this. So I send her the screenshot of this. And she starts writing based on what she, her reflection on what she me, she thinks about this affirmation on her she, own. I didn't get, even ask her. Where'd you get that idea? I've been doing it every day with them. I for, know daily you're stoic. In that chat, the of course books, I the see it. Books. Yes, I know. But they I'm just saying. And they have to just write about what do they think. What of does it course, mean to them? I see this, and this is awesome. And this is not only. I think that the managers, the leaders, CEOs, that should be someone should be sending something every single day to this department. Let people think a little bit. Let them send some affirmation for the day. You know why? Because imagine if you come to a workplace when maybe there is something uh, played through the megaphone or through, uh, you know, voice recording. Uh, today would be a great day. And whatever affirmation you can have, you can play it on that radio or direct I inbox know what you're talking about anymore. direct inbox of an Playing affirmation on the radio. yeah like you know what hold on you don't even know in Bryant Ranch when they were going to school they had these Did affirmations you just say a name of a school <clears throat> you just snitches end up in ditches we don't oh, give out specifics and details okay there is a lot of different schools out there you've already said the name like Doesn't matter. Unsaved. Okay, but okay. So the beautiful right, so the affirmation have, was through the megaphone played every single day, and I really loved it. I think it's it an was, awesome. Yeah, it was probably some Nazi bullshit that they're trying to force down their throat to tell them, oh, <laughs> associate with whatever you want to associate with today. Freaking be a donkey today. Hee haw, hee haw. Like who knows what they're fucking telling them to do. <laughs> the point is, the business can help the, the, the treat the the family like a business. Treat the business like a family. And we added in that third piece of the clients, the team members, and the family. A revolving door use wins and the strategies and tactics in one to improve the other, to help each other, to overcome struggles in the other. What's working in one area, most likely or some way to use it and utilize it as a weaponize it in another area of life. And we went over the finances, the financial side. We said meetings, scheduling, and socializing. All that like massive ways you could take just those four alone. If you took those four from one area of life, you're automatically, it's a force multiplier. You're going to make that other area right now. If you're not doing those, and I guarantee you're not doing most of those, and you do those right now, game changing, life changing, implement it. Stop bullshitting. Don't just listen to this. Say, oh, that sounds cool. Go out and fucking do it. That is the purpose of this show, to help those married couples with kids that work from home, that have their own business and live and have home offices to use this stuff so you can operate to dominate in your family, your fitness, your business, and just life in general, your mindset. 
So this is what this show is all about, Russian and the Freak Show. And of course, please like and subscribe to this podcast. Like and subscribe on YouTube channel. Send us messages. Send us your thoughts. Comment on uh, this episode on YouTube. Subscribe, like, and share, and comment. And you know who you need to share this with? Probably you need to share it with your spouse so they can realize how to start implementing some of this stuff. But you know who you really need to share this with? your team members, and probably your boss, probably your manager, if you have a boss or your business partners, share it to them. They need to hear this and they need to open up their fucking minds about how they can make things even freaking better. Because today was really a gold information, gold of information. So share, like, and comment below. We'll see you next time on the Rush and the Freak. This has been episode number two of the Rush and the Freak podcast. We'll see you next time in case no one... <laughs> you just want to fight? Indiana Jones is ready. I thought Indiana movie. Jones is coming to fight. Next, you're gonna pull out a whip and start whipping me. We need me. to have some kind of thing here going on with our hands. High five, low five, something. Or we could just say we'll see you next or time. We can on, hug. On, 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 or we can say we'll see you next time on episode three. This has been Russian Freak episode number two. We will see you next time. In case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No, no excuses. excuses. Weeks didn't change it. Experiments, development, intelligence, and patience. I'll, don't give up on your future. We all start losers. We're all late bloomers. Gotta sell them to the sewer. What you say? Yeah, I'ma do shit my way.